This is Cerebral Cinema. Movies of the Mind. Solving crime is unequaled in the history of detective fiction. Nick Carter, Master Detective. Tonight's curious adventure... Missing Harold Ascot. For Nick Carter and the great kidnapping mystery. And here's Nick Carter himself to tell you the story. As you probably already noticed, I'm not going to tell you the story that I announced last week. Instead, I want to tell you a rather different kind of tale. One which started as Patsy and I rang the doorbell at the rather magnificent home of Mrs. Philip Ascourt, just off the upper end of the park at about 10.30 one morning. Yes? I'm Nick Carter. Mrs. Ascourt's expecting me. Yes, Mr. Carter. Won't you come in, please? Thank you. If you and the young lady will go into the living room, I'll tell Mrs. Ascourt you're here. Certainly. Gosh, Nick, the Ascourts must have more money than they know what to do with. Just look at this place. Yes, Patsy, the Ascots belong to one of the oldest families in the city. Old and conservative, rich but never ostentatious. Mm, so I see. See, I wish I could have oh, I think I hear Mrs. Ascot coming. Oh, Mr. Carter, I want to thank you for coming so very promptly. I know how busy you are, but I really am in trouble, desperate trouble, and I, I don't know who else to turn to but you. Why, Mrs. Ascot, I'll be very happy to help you if I can. This is my assistant, Patsy Bourne. How do you do? You do. Now, what's wrong? It's my son, Harold, Mr. Carter. He's been kidnapped. I found this note inside my newspaper this morning. Mm. Well, what does it say, Nick? It says we've got your son. If you want him back, don't call the cops. We'll tell you what to do later. And there's no signature. Can you tell anything by that letter, Mr. Carter? Of well, course, the handwriting is obviously disguised. Half printing and half writing. Papers, good bond paper. Ah, as a watermark, it looks like a dragon's tail. Ah, the top of the sheet of paper's been cut off. A pair of scissors, apparently, if the cut isn't quite even. Why do you suppose they did that? Well, there was probably a letterhead on it, and the writer didn't want the paper traced, of course. Oh. But they didn't cut quite all of the pinning off. Can't read what's left, but later on it may help to identify it. It looks like hotel stationery, doesn't it, Nick? Yes, Patsy, that's what I was thinking. I'll have Scubby make a round of the hotels and see if he can find the one it came from. Oh, Mr. Carter, do you think you can find my boy? Well, I certainly hope so, Mrs. Ascourt. And I'll do my best. But in the meantime, just sit tight and wait until you hear from me again. Or until the kidnapped gang makes its next move. <laughs> Nick. Didn't take you long to get here. It's no time to waste in a kidnap case, Cubby. You never could be sure when the gang will get frightened or annoyed and kill the victim. Now, you find the same kind of newspaper here, you say? I sure did, Nick. The same size, same watermark, and as near as I can tell from what's left in the kidnap note, the same printing at the top. Good. But what now, Nick? How does knowing the paper came from here help you any? If the paper came from here, it's quite possible that whoever wrote the kidnap note was staying here in the hotel at the time. Yeah. And if he was, the hotel register may give us a further clue. Oh, but the handwriting on the note was disguised, Nick. Not quite so, Scubby. But it's impossible to completely disguise any writing so that it may not be identified. Even when the writing's apparently completely changed, there will always be some peculiar characteristic left that'll give it away. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, clerk. Yes? Do you mind if we look at your register a moment? Not at all, sir. Here you are. Now, let's see. Young Ascot disappeared on Tuesday afternoon, and it's possible that the signature we want might be under Sunday or Monday's day. Well, do you know what to look for? Yes or no, Skippy. I've memorized the looks of the writing in the kidnapped note, and I expect to recognize any similar peculiarities in the signature here. Mm, no, nothing here under Sunday's day. Uh -huh. Let's try Monday. Okay, right over here. Here, here. 
Look at this one. James Scannett. I never heard of him. Of course you haven't. Neither have I. But look at that S. Yeah. And the J. Uh-huh. Note how oddly they're made? This signature, like the kidnap note, is half written and half printed, too. Evidently the work of a man who learned to write late in life. And a man who never writes easily. Oh, I see what you mean, Nick. No questions, Gubby. This is our man. Clerk. Uh, yes, sir. Is this James Scannett in the hotel? James Scannett? Uh, no, sir. He checked out this morning. Mm, I was afraid of that. You recall what he looked like? Oh, medium height, sandy haired, little mustache. He had a crooked little finger on his right hand. I remember him because he asked a lot of questions last night. Mm, thanks, Bert. Well, do you know him, Nick? Why, yes, Gubby. But I sent that man up the river three years ago for a five year stretch. Oh. Well, maybe he's out. Yeah, maybe. I know a man who can tell me. I'll give him a ring and see. Come on. Well, whom did the description fit, Nick? Sounds like Jack Vincent, Scabby. Yeah? Forger and a con man. An old-timer at the business. I can't see for the world how... Oh, pardon me for a minute. Oh, sure, Nick. I'll wait here. This is Nick Carter. Oh, fine, fine, thanks. Say, uh, Bill, is Jack Vincent still up at state prison? Oh, two weeks ago. No, nothing special yet. Well, thanks, Bill. Good luck. Goodbye. Well, what did he say, Nick? Vincent was pardoned two weeks ago. Uh, He's our man, all right. You know, it's a funny thing, Nick, but while you were in there phoning... A couple of men went by me, and I heard one of them say to the other, I saw Vincent Grady's bar last night. Now, maybe that's where he hangs out. You say you just heard that now, Scubby? Yeah, just now. That's queer. Well, how do you mean, Nick? Scubby, things are going a bit too easily. A notepaper that can be traced, the name in the register, the description, and now the conversation you say you overheard. You mean you think it's some kind of a frame-up? Might be, Scubby. Might be. Well, gee, if it is, Nick, you if better If it is, think... I'm going ahead just as I was before. Just be a little bit more careful, that's all. Well, they want me to go to Grady's bar. That's where I'm going. See you at the office later, Scubby. And he fell for it, Jack. Hook, line, and sinker, just like you said. I gotta hand it to you. And you told him where he could find me? I said it real loud, right beside that stooge of his. I said I'd seen you in Grady's place here. He's coming here now? Yeah. I beat it on ahead to let you know he was coming. Good. Well, you take care of him when he gets here. Gee, you're awful smart, Jack. Ain't no wonder I can't go for you. Yeah, but don't forget, I owe him one, too. He sent my pop to the chair for bumping off that old rat of a watchman last winter. I ain't forgot that, you betcha. Okay, Gertie, cut the gap. Huh? Looks like Carter's coming in now. Ah, uh, he can't see us where we're sitting. Yeah, that's him. Hey, do I look okay in this apron I borrowed from Pete? Sure, you look like a regular waiter, Ben. Hey, you got a tray? Yeah, yeah, right here. You sure he don't know you, Ben? Ah, he broke up my racket last year, but he never seen me. Gee, we all got it in for him, ain't we? You bet we have. And here's where I pays off. Watch me. Waiter. Yes, sir. Bring me a large ginger ale and coke, will you? Coming right up. Well, Nick, lots of familiar faces here, but nobody I really know. I wonder if Vincent might have moved out of town after he had the snatch. And that conversation Scubby overheard, if he did over here, it sounds to me like... Yeah, sir. Oh, thanks. Here, get the change. Thank you, sir. Well... At least this ginger ale's cold. Doesn't taste that bad. Yeah, it's sort of odd flavor to it, though. There must be a new brand of Cokes they mix with it. Can't say that I enjoy it. Why, it's queer. Isn't hot enough in here to make me dizzy like this. It seemed to be... My neck, you fool. You've been doped. You've been... You've been... Uh, uh. Yeah, look it. 
He's out cold. Gee, Ben, you must have made it strong. You bet I did. I ain't taking no chances. I put three of them in. I go on, Gertie, and get the car and make it fast. I don't want none of Carter's friends to come looking for him before we can get him out of here. Okay. This is the day I've been waiting for for three years. Don't look much like a great detective, does he? All tied up and gagged like that. I'll say he don't. <laughs> he looks more like a trussed-up chicken. Or a dead duck. <laughs> and that's what he's going to be as soon as he wakes up. A dead duck. You mean you ain't going to kill him now? No. Nah, there's no fun in killing him when he don't know who's doing it. I want him to look me in the eye when I send a bullet into his brain. Oh, gee, Jack, I thought you'd let me kill him. Nothing doing. This is my party. Private and exclusive. Did you get his guns? Yeah, both of them. Hey, should we leave him here in the back room for now, Jack? Yeah, he won't come to for another couple of hours. He'll be safe here. Yeah. Now, you and Gertie stay here and watch him. I got some stuff I want to take care of. I'll be back by the time he wakes up. Okay. There you go, Mr. Master Detective. <clears throat> and there you stay till we're ready for you. Have a nice sleep. And keep your eye on Gertie, Ben. She might forget and bump him off all by herself. Nicholas Carter's office. Well, this is Mrs. Ascorp speaking. Is Mr. Carter there? Why, no, he isn't. Has something else come up? Yes. Yes, I've got another note from the kidnapper. They want $100,000 immediately. Good heavens, $100,000? Oh, what shall I do? Mr. Carter said to do nothing until I heard from him. Oh, I've no idea where he is. He should have been back here long ago. You better just do nothing, as he said, until we hear from him. He's bound to call me pretty soon. Unless... Unless something's happened to him. Oh, what a headache that stuff leaves behind. I'll certainly right for being such an idiot. I knew what I was walking into, and I walked right into it. Gosh, but it's dark in here. You sent my papa the check. He'll never send nobody else there. Because you ain't going to live no longer. I'm going to fix you right now. I'm going to... What the... <laughs> Sorry to have to be so rough with you, lady. But it's my life or yours. You're only stunned. Now... I can reach that knife she dropped before she gets her senses back. I can cut these ropes <coughs> and get free. <coughs> Just a little more. <coughs> if I could only see behind my back. Oh, where is that knife? <coughs> I want to be able to reach it now. Just uh, So I sat up, stuck my legs out, and tripped you. You dropped your knife. I knocked your head on the floor, and I stunned you. Then I found the knife, cut my ropes. Now I'm getting out of here. Oh, no, 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 you can't. Jack will kill me. He'll murder me. You should have thought of that before. Now, don't try anything. Your friends overlooked this little pistol I carry in my shoulder holster. It's very small, but effective, I assure you. What are you going to do? Why'd you dope and bring me here? To kill me? Well, Jack and Ben were scared you'd try to break up their plans for the kidnap yes, job. I knew it. Now listen carefully. Who else is in this house now? Only Ben. He's in the next room. Good. Now, when I tell you to, call Ben. Tell him you're afraid I'm waking up. Ask him to come in here, but don't you warn him. You want me to, 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 to ask him to come in here? Yes, but no funny business. Now, call him. All right. Ben? Ben? What do you want? I think Nick Carter's waking up. You better come have a look at him. Just quick. Yeah. Uh, hey, don't touch him. You wait until Jack gets back and then... Look out, Over there, Hans! Ah! I warned you. Now stand aside. 
I'm leaving here, and don't try to stop me. I'll be seeing you both later, under different circumstances. How do you do, Miss Boone? Nick, where in the world have you been? We've been waiting for you for hours. I'm sorry, Patsy. Anything special been going on? Anything special? I should say so. Mrs. Ascord has called five times. She got a note from the kidnappers telling her it would cost her $100,000 to get her son back. And she's going crazy, waiting for you to tell her what to do. Hey, Patsy, have you heard anything from... From me, Scubby? Well, Nick, what happened to you? Jack Vincent laid a trap for me, and I walked into it. Did you learn anything? No, Scubby, I didn't. Except that it all has to do with the kidnap case we're working on. Well, did you have any trouble, Nick? Well, depends on what you call trouble, Scubby. And more of that later. Now, what about Mrs. Ascot? Well, she wants you to call her as soon as you come in. I'll get it for you. All right, Tessie. We've got to move fast. Maybe too late even now. My being there and getting away doesn't help any. Mrs. Ascot, just a minute, please. Here she is, Nick. All right. Hello, Mrs. Ascot. Sorry I've been uh, held up where you couldn't get hold of me. What's up? Oh, Mr. Carter, I received a note from my son. It says that I'll have to pay his kidnappers $100,000 if I want to get him back. The note also says that that I've got to take you off the case or he will be killed. He says that, that so far they've not mistreated him, but he begs me to pay the money and get him free. Is the note in your son's handwriting? Oh, yes, yes, I'm sure of that. What shall I do, Mr. Carter? Well, does the note give you any way of getting in touch with him? Yes. Yes, it, it says to put an ad in the personal column of the clarion, address to safety, and let them know what I decide. Good. Put the ad in the clarion. Tell them you're willing to pay the money and ask them how they want it paid. All right, Mr. Carter, but but how about, well, what they have to say about getting rid of you? You know what I... I understand, Mrs. Ascord. Tell them in the air that you'll guarantee that I'll have nothing further to do with the case. Oh, but that... that would be a lie, wouldn't it? Yes, of course it would. But would you prefer that the kidnappers kill your son? Oh, oh no, of course not, Mr. All Carter. All right, then. Put the ad in just as I said. And let me know the minute you get an answer. Then we'll plan our next step. Oh, Mr. Carter, I'm so glad you've come. An answer to the ad that I put in the paper just came in the morning mail. Here it is. Thank you. On Route 77B, five and two-tenths miles north of Route 31, is a large single oak tree right beside the road. It's the only tree around. Make up a bundle of ten, twenty, and fifty dollar bills, one hundred thousand dollars in all. Throw the bundle out at the foot of the tree this afternoon at five o'clock sharp. Drive by at not less than twenty five miles an hour, and do not stop. Your son will be sent back to you tomorrow morning. He'll be alive if you follow directions. He'll be dead if you don't. Gosh. Mm-hmm. That's it. Hmm? Where's that map I asked you to bring along? Well, here it is, Nick. Well, I still don't know how you could tell what section of the state we were going to need a map of. Well, Patsy, when I went back to the gang's hideout yesterday afternoon, it was deserted. The only things I could find that interested me were a rough draft of the original kidnap note made in the back of an envelope addressed to Jack Vincent. Mm -hmm. And also a timetable showing trains running to a certain part of the state. Well, what part was that, Nick? The part I asked you to bring the map of. Very simple. Very simple. To you. Well, where is it? Here. Hmm. Now, let's see. Route 77B is here. Route 316 crosses it right here. Mm-hmm. It's about 45 miles out of the city, in a very thinly settled section. What shall we do about it, Mr. Carter? We'll do just exactly as the note says. Have your bankers make up the bundle of $100,000 in 10s, 20s, and 50s. Yes. Take Patsy with you. And have your chauffeur drive you up to the spot designated in this note. Throw the bundle out, and then leave the rest to me. Well, I'm sure glad it's clear today. Otherwise, we'd be out of luck. See anything, Scubby? No, not yet. Hey, Nick, do you suppose anything has gone wrong? No, I doubt it. I have entire faith in Patsy's ability to follow instructions. Gee, she's sort of deserted around here, isn't it? Yes. Only a few scattered houses and very little traffic. 
Oh, here, Scubby. Suppose you take over the controls of the plane for a while while I take the glasses and have a look around. Oh, sure, Nick. We are. Thanks. Got stick? Yeah. All set. These glasses are really high powered, aren't they? Hey. I think I could. Can... Yes, yes, there they are. And right on time. Are you sure this is the right road, James? Yes, Miss Asgore, this is the right road. Oh, I'd feel so much safer if Mr. Carter were here. Why, if any little thing were to go wrong, it it might mean my boy's life. That's why I'm here, Mrs. Asgore, just to see that nothing does go wrong. The place you want is about a half a mile ahead, Mrs. Asgore. Oh, dear, so soon? Oh, I... Oh, I'm all of a jitter, Miss Bowen. You'll have to throw the package out. I, I just can't do it. Now, don't you worry, Mrs. Asgore. I'll take care of everything. Uh, uh, slow down just a little, will you please, James? Yes, miss. Oh, I wish I knew how Nick is planning to get the money back. The gang could go anywhere from here and we'd never know where it was. Oh, I hope Mr. Carter won't do anything to, to interfere with my getting my boy back. He's worth all the money I have. You can trust Nick to do the right thing. There's the tree just ahead. Oh. Now, help me up with the package. All right. That's it. Yes, yes now. I'm going to let it go out the window. There it goes. Well, that's that. Oh, you're wonderful, Miss Bowen. Did you see anybody? No. No, nobody. Not a soul around here anywhere. I still can't see anybody. The bundle is still right by the side of the road where it fell. Oh, heck, this curve cuts off the view entirely. Well, at least we've done our part. Yes, we've done our part. The rest is up to Nick. <laughs> Yep, those are Nick's orders, Sheriff. Drive as close to the house as you can and then park your car in the bushes just off the road. Okay. Uh, where's Carter now? Oh, well, he went on ahead to get the layout of the place. Wants to get his plan set by the time we get there. I don't understand how you know them fellas are hiding out there. You say neither you nor Carter have ever been near the house. Well, I'll tell you, Sheriff, it's really very simple. When Mrs. Ascourt dropped a bundle of money out of her car this afternoon, Nick and I were overhead in Nick's plane watching everything through his extra high-powered field glasses. Huh. Yeah. yeah. We saw the crooks come and pick up the money, and then we watched them beat it back to the farmhouse. <laughs> they took every back road and cow path they could find to keep from being followed, but we could see them, no matter where they went. Yeah. Where, All the time, the one man that they were really afraid of was up there over their heads watching it. <laughs> hey, that's quite a stunt. I've heard tell this Nick Carter's quite a feller. <laughs> Darn if I don't believe it now. Well, darn if you don't head better. <laughs> well, we better stop here, huh? Don't dare go no closer to the house with the car. I'll just run her off into the bushes here. <sighs> well, I wonder where Nick is. You ought to be here anymore. Yeah, yeah. So far, so good. They haven't seen me yet. Yeah. Yeah, this is the window where the boy should be, if I'm right. Too dark to see what's inside the room. I don't have to take a chance to climb through the window and see for myself. be able to slip the latch in an old window like this. This knife will do it, I think. There. Hope my luck goes a little while longer. I guess it's safe to use my flashlight here. Yeah, there he is. Oh, Harold. Harold. Mm. Oh. Quiet, quiet. Not a sound. Keep that sort quiet. You all right? Yeah. Quite a pretty bad cold yesterday, though. But who are you? You're not one of the gang. No, 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 I'm not one of the gang. I'm, I'm Nick Carter. Nick Carter? Yes. Gee, I've heard of you. You're going to save me, huh? That's just what I'm going to do. I'll get these ropes off you. I'm the lights first. Yeah. <coughs> there we are. Uh, feel better? Gosh, yes. Now see if you can stand up. Well, it's not very easy yet. But I'll be all right. Good boy. 
We've got to get you out of here pronto before one of the gang comes up to have a look at you. Oh, all right. How do we get out? Out of the window, same as I came in. All right, come on now. Quiet. Okay. Whatever you say, Mr. Carter. I'm out the window under the roof. Easy now. Easy. That's the boy. Gee, it's dark out here. Can't see anything, hardly. Just follow me. There's a post in the corner of the porch we can slide down. I came up it. Careful now. There it is. Here we are. Okay. I'll come right behind you. You go ahead, Mr. Carter. Not Mr. Carter, Harold. Just call me Nick. Gosh, Nick. Am I going to have something to tell the fellas when I get back home? All right. Here we come. That's the boy. Gee, that was easy, wasn't it? All right, son. Sure. Let's get going away from here. All right. My friend Scubby and the sheriff ought to be over there on the edge of the brush. Hey, is that you, Nick? Yes, Scubby. And I have the boy, too. Suffer and catfish, Mr. Carter. How in heaven's name do you get him out of there without getting caught? It was easy. Nick's a good detective. I bet he can do anything. Well, thanks for the plug, Harold. Now, here's my idea. Are the three of them still in the living room where they were a few minutes ago? Yeah, I just took a look and they're still there. What's your idea, Carter? Well, this is it. I think Harold is still tied up nice and snug in his attic room. Now, if they should happen to hear him out here in front of the house, they'd probably come rushing out to see what's up, wouldn't they? Sure. Well, go on, Nick. Well, I don't want any shooting. If I can help it, somebody might get hurt. So you and I will stand one on each side of the front door, Scubby, while the sheriff goes around to the back door, ready to come up from behind them. Yeah, ma'am. Then Harold will stand out here in front of the house and shout good and loud. They'll come out to see what's what, and we'll poke our guns on their backs. No shooting, no trouble. All nice and simple. Gee, that's swell. What'll I yell, Nick? Oh, whatever comes into your head. Anything at all. Okay, Sheriff? Yep. Sounds nice and simple, if it works. Well, here goes the rear guard. Come on, Scum, and get your guns ready. Okay. And, Harold, if anything goes wrong, you run for the woods. They'll never find you out there on a back night like this. Okay, Nick. When do I yell? Count five slowly. That'll give Scubby and me time to get into position beside the door. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Ready for the mounted. Yippee! Wow! What the devil is the chief doing out here? Get your hands on and fast. Don't try reaching for your guns. We've got you surrounded. Nick Carter. How did you just keep those hands in the air, Vincent? Okay. All right, Scubby, get the guns. Okay, Nick. Here, get it. Ah. Only one on Ben, and two on our friend Jack. All right, just come along here now. Stop it. Find this gal trying to skip out the back way, so I brought her along. She belongs to this outfit? Well, I'll see she does. She was the one who watched me while the men went out for the money. Well, looks like we got everything, don't it? Yes, yeah, certainly does, Sheriff. Everything but the ransom money, which must be here in the house somewhere. Nick, hmm? can I hold a gun on one of them? Why, sure, son. Here, take Jack's gun. And keep it pointed right at him all the time. Hey, Carter, don't let that kid have that gun. He don't know nothing about guns. It might go off and somebody get hurt. You're quite right, Vincent. But would it interest you to know that I wouldn't care if it did? As far as I'm concerned, kidnappers are pretty filthy things. The lowest of the low. Oh, Mr. Carter... How can I ever repay you for what you've done for me and my boy? Well, I'm very happy that we were able to get the boy back for you, Mrs. Asker. And the money, too. Oh, please tell me how much I owe you, Mr. Carter. I want to send you a check at once, a, a big one. You owe me nothing, Mrs. Asker. Oh, but Mr. Carter... If you really I... want to repay me, I suggest that you put at least an extra $10,000 into war bonds in this fourth war loan drive. And give the bonds to the Associated Boys Clubs of the city. I can think of no better way to spend money right now. Buying the bonds helps the boys who are fighting for us today. And giving the bonds to the boys' clubs helps the boys of tomorrow. It's a wonderful combination. Cerebral Cinema hopes you have enjoyed this movie of the mind. 